Let's drive the equation for combining resistors in series and parallel. Let's start in series. Suppose we have a circuit, a simple circuit, with a power supply. The potential difference across that power supply is V0. And then we have two resistors in series connected to that power supply. And perhaps we should say that these have potential difference across them of V1 and V2. Well, the current through the power supply we can call I0. The current through the first resistor we can call I1. The second resistor we can call I2. And so we could say in terms of resistance that the first resistor here, V1, is equal to I1, R1. And for the second one, V2 is equal to I2, R2. But between this point and this point, we've got a potential difference across them and a current passing through that region there. So we could say that V0 is equal to I0, R0, where R0 is just the resistance from this point to this point. So that's the resistance of the whole, uh, the whole circuit. It's the resistance of these two combined. Another way of looking at it is it's the equivalent resistance to these two resistors that will do the same job, give the same current passing through the power supply. Right, well, let's use Kirchhoff's first law to start with. Kirchhoff's first law is I0 is going to equal I1, which is going to equal I2. Nice and easy. Now we can look at potential differences, and we can use Kirchhoff's second law. V0 is going to equal V1 plus V2, and you can see how they are different. That's because these components are in series with each other. So now all we need to do is combine these. I'm going to do that down here. Instead of V0, I'm going to write I0, R0. Instead of V1, I'm going to write I1, R1. Plus, and instead of V2, I'm going to write I2, R2. Now, what we know is that I1 is equal to I2, which is equal to I0. So we could just call those three I for simplicity, and we could say that I, R0, is equal to I, R1, plus I, R2. Well, those I's are going to cancel, because you could divide through by I, and you are left with the correct equation. The combined resistance is equal to the sum of the two resistances when they are in series. So we got to that equation just by using Kirchhoff's first law, Kirchhoff's second law, and the definition of resistance. Now let's take a look at circuits in parallel. So let's start with our power supply, same as we had before. And just as before, we could say this got a potential difference across it of V0. And now what I'm going to do is have a resistor connected directly to the power supply and a second resistor connected in parallel with the first, just like that. We're going to say the potential difference across these two resistors are V1 and V2. We're going to say the current through the power supply is I0, through resistor 1 is I1, through resistor 2 is I2, just like that. We can say, just as we had before, that V1 will equal I1, R1. That doesn't stop being true that V2 equals I2, R2. That doesn't stop being true either. And we could look between this point and this point, and if we've got I0 passing through this region with V0, potential difference across that, then we could say that V0 is equal to I0, R0. But R0 is the resistor that we could replace these two resistors with that would do the same job. We could replace these two parallel resistors between this point and this point with a single resistor, it would have a resistance R0 if it causes the same current to pass through, I0, when you have a potential difference, V0. So that's OK. Now let's have a look at our Kirchhoff's laws. We have, just as we had before, Kirchhoff's first law. Only this time, it's I0 equals I1 plus I2. Because with Kirchhoff's first law, we have junctions here. And so the current will branch off, and we have that. We also have 
Kirchhoff's second law. Kirchhoff's second law is V0 equals I1 equals, sorry, V1 equals V2. They're all the same. And they're all the same because they're all connected to the same point. You know, if you look over here, if this, let's say, is 9 volts potential here, there's nothing in between any of these points along these wires and that point where it's 9 volts potential. So they're all at the same potential. If you look down this side, if that's 0 volt potential on this side, then all these points are at 0 volts potential. So the potential difference across this second resistor must be the same as the potential difference across the first resistor, which must be the same as the potential difference across the power supply. Well, that's fine. Let's take the equation for current, and we're going to substitute these red equations into it. So each of those red equations now needs to be rearranged so that I is the subject. I0, that's taking this equation over here, is going to be V0 divided by R0. I1 is going to be V1 divided by R1 and I2 is going to be V2 divided by R2. And now we can substitute those into this green equation here, and we end up with um, V0 over R0 equals, that's I0, equals V1 over R1 plus V2 over R2. Because all these potential differences are the same, let's just call them V. And so this becomes V over R0 is equal to V over R1 plus V over R2. And what we can do is we can divide through by V and end up with 1 over R0 is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And there it is. That's our equation for combining resistors in parallel. And again, it was derived just by using Kirchhoff's first law, Kirchhoff's second law, and the definition of resistance. So I hope you found those two derivations useful.